Hello everyone. Hi. How are you doing? My name is Kelly Tavares and today we will have the Copacabana Beach Tour. So I hope you enjoy and stay with me throughout the, the, the walk. Because today we will show you the beach, the sea, some of the landscape and uh, urban plans in the area and some curiosities as well. For now, I'd like to know uh, who is already in the room. Well, the temperature is 84 Fahrenheit and 29 centigrades in Rio, and it's almost 5 p.m. Is the quality of the sound good there? I see that already Vinny is present. Hi, Vinny. Is that your second tour in Copacabana with me? F, hi, F, and Adrian. I will be checking here. Uh, my um, who is getting in, who is joining, so I can see already that Adrian is in, Nikki, Mary Lee, and from Wisconsin, Carrie, and I. So uh, I'm seeing here. Uh, is this uh, is the image good and the sound good as well? Okay. I will also show you, uh, if you can see here on my back, there is a tree. And this tree, for those who like landscape art, landscape architects, I see, and uh, all the tree and botanics, this tree is a picui tree. And it gives a very interesting fruit. And I'm gonna share with you here in the lens. Look at this fruit. It's closed, it was closed like that. And then when it's ripe, it pops up and opens up like this. And the fruits are there inside, are these orange and red fruits that you can see. I thought these were very curious, so that's, I wanted to share the, the fruit with you. And uh, you know, these kind of things, some fruits, they, uh, the flowers, they will blossom once a year. And the fruits, they you have the season also once a year. So it's very unique. And ourselves as guides as well, and I myself, we have different findings in Rio. Uh, the city is big, it's very diverse. And the landscape uh, architect plants in the areas, in the forests and the beaches, they offer you, they offer us such a diverse flora that we are always finding out new things and also learning more. So that's why I wanted to share this with you, this unique fruit. Now I'm gonna leave it on the steps of the, the tree. And uh, Daniel, who is here present with me today with us, he is helping out again with the nice camera shots at the beach and we are showing you the beautiful tree, which is an apui fruit and tree, or a clusia glandicoria. Now, we are taking a walk because we are in front of the Copacabana Palace, famous hotel in Rio de Janeiro. And in about two minutes, more people will join and we are, we are starting the walk in front of the hotel. Today I will talk to you about the Copacabana Palace and also some beautiful landscapes and how people enjoy beach life in Rio de Janeiro. The weather is beautiful today. Hi, Dorota, thanks for joining. I bet like in Wisconsin, as I see here, Mary Lee, it might be very cold, isn't it? And where are many of you from? Vinny, F, Adrian, Nikki, Carrie, and Dorota. Where are you speaking from? New Jersey, east of the US, right? East Coast, Florida, the South, East. Vini from New Jersey, Carrie from Florida. So as you see the avenue 
is the Atlantica Avenue in Copacabana. It's a busy avenue in front of the, the, the beach. So this is an urban beach. I bet like in Florida, you might have some of these busy beaches there, don't you? Yeah. So some people come like uh, and dream to come and travel to Rio. And they say, ah, I, I travel, I dream with those tropical beaches and paradise. And, uh, and many people stay many times just in Copacabana. And then when they come and do live tours with me, they say, oh, I thought I would see like this tropical calm beaches, paradisiac and very quiet. But when I got to Copacabana, I saw such a dynamic lifestyle in the middle of the city. Many vendors selling things on the streets, a lot of people, parties and so on. And I say, yes, this is an urban beach. But actually, actually and indeed, we do have quiet beaches. And they are in the wild parts, or we call them the Praia Selvagens, Igurumari, After Recreio, Pontal. So they are in the west zone of the city. And it's just like one hour or 50 minutes away here. It's like open sea and you have quieter beaches, especially during the weekdays, because weekends, many of the families, they also want to go to the quiet beaches. So they go there and they go picnicking. So it's more fun uh, style. Oh yes, and also on the wild beaches there, it's uh, you have many hikes that you can do. I also hike on the Grumari beaches and uh, I do many of the beaches there. And the hikes making like long hikes, and it's a very nice place with different landscape and different urban settings as well. So, uh, Danielle, would you please show these trees uh, from uh, the distance as well? So these are the Apui trees, the one that I showed you the fruit. And uh, there are a few fruits hanging there. And also it has a beautiful white flower that I don't know if that's going to be able to spot. But after the flower comes the fruits and the fruits pop out and they, they drop on the floor. One interesting thing about these uh, plants and vegetations around the beach shore and the shores uh, in Brazil and in many uh, uh, ecosystems and biomass around the shores is that the leaves, they are really thick. And they are thick leaves because near the beach you have mostly salt water and not many sources and water supply of sweet waters. What makes uh, the tree needs a stronger effort to uh, suck the water so they need to save energy having and developing thicker leaves. So I'm sharing one of the leaves here that are yellow already. And I don't know if you can see, but they're really, uh, they're really thick. And if I, if I fold it, you see, I, I even crack these close to the microphone. So maybe you hear the sound of these leaves cracking, how thick those are. So they can keep the water, the source of water when it rains, they can keep it for a longer time and they don't rely on they don't have to rely on having a lot of water to survive. So these kind of vegetations are very common on beach uh, biomasses and areas. Okay, so this is for those who like botanics and ecology. Uh, I even offer also a tour about the Charles Darwin's path in uh, Niterói, which I talk about the evolution of the species and I show some of the landscapes where Charles Darwin uh, passed by here in Rio de Janeiro. Now, uh, we're starting our tour in Copacabana, officially starting it, and I am Kelly Tavares, tour guide in Rio. Thanks for being here with me, and I'm gonna show you the Copacabana Palace famous hotel. As you see, this beautiful building built up on 1923, it's hosting a party and it's a five-star hotel where many celebrities, when they come to Rio de Janeiro, they stay here. But don't worry, never mind. Uh, if you come here with a little money on your pocket, 
well, um, a little bit more than a little, you can actually get some nice promos and join and maybe stay here at Copacabana Palace. At the top of the Copacabana Palace, there is a Brazilian flag there. And it's yellow, green, and blue. Same colors of yellow and green of the Oregon University. For those of you who are in the west coast of the U.S., I am an alum from the University of Oregon, Go Ducks. And I see here that Marisa and Ellen also joined the tour. Welcome, and Ellen and Marisa, to the Copacabana Beach Tour. We are here showcasing the Copacabana Palace and they are hosting a very nice party there, but we were not invited. So let's keep going and walking. Let's go to the beach. I'm going to share more curiosities about Copacabana. Did you know that here in Copacabana in Rio, we do have connections with South America? Our story uh, directly connects with the history of the people who came from Peru and Bolivia in the 1700s to sell silver here in Rio de Janeiro. And I'll tell you a little bit more because that's directly related with the name of the city. I'd like to know from you, if you have any questions so far or along the tour, I will be checking on my chat box here on the phone uh, while Daniel will be here, my friend Daniel will be here showing you some of the nice landscapes of the beach of Copacabana. So please ask me any questions. If I don't know how to answer, you give me an opportunity to just research more. And then also you give me an opportunity to follow your own interests while taking this tour. What really makes it worth watching if that's interesting for you. So. Yes, the, the traffic light, it closes there on the other side, but doesn't necessarily close here on this lane. So be sure that both lanes are closed when, when you try to cross the streets. As you see, uh, it's 5 p.m. in Rio de Janeiro and the traffic light opens up really fast. So we won't have time to cross now but you have an idea of the rush hour in Copacabana look how many people are already creating a little traffic here at the beach in front of Copacabana Beach because people are living work right now and they are coming to the beach uh, to uh, do sports Copacabana is very famous for the practice of different sports modalities and I will also feature and tell you a little bit of the Olympics time and how Copacabana participated on that. Also, many people who work here in Copacabana are leaving work now and going to the north zone of the city where many of them live. Ah, for those who like Rolling Stones, uh, Rolling Stones. Daniel is just reminding me here, uh, another curiosity, because Daniel is like my assistant, but more than assistant, he's a video maker from Penaforta Videos. And you, if you send me a message later, I can share with you his channel so you can follow on YouTube with awesome videos from Rio de Janeiro. And also Daniel is my friend. So better than being a, a video assistant here in the tour, he is a friend and also follow him so you, he can be your friend as well. But when you come here to Rio, you can have your own videographer doing this, uh, recording your best moments in town. Uh, more people join it. Thank you so much, Doris, Bev, Doug, Atina. Hi, Alva, Katharina. Hey, Joe. Art A, Mary Lou from Canada. Lucky Daniel, yes. <laughs> Randy, do you think you're lucky, Daniel, to be my friend? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Hey, Randy, thanks for joining. Hey, Joe, thanks for waving. CW, let's cross the street and now it's safe. It's very safe now. People are here setting up the... Uh, street food carts 
we have a bike lane where people are really bringing their coming from different places with their bikes, rollerblades, and skates to skateboard around around the bike lane. Hey Sue, thanks for joining. Ah, no, there is a, the famous churros. Churros. Churros is something that is already connected also with Mexico. It's a very typical food from Mexico that you can find also in Rio de Janeiro. So those of you, hey Constanza, thanks for joining. Who like your, your churros with Nutella, with chocolate or uh, condensed milk, you can have your own. Look, this couple is already having their, their churros in front of the beach. And Nikki, you have already a question here directly from Luton, UK. Is it still warm there at the the minute? Muito bom, né, Constanza? Yes, it's warm. Look how I'm dressed up, you know, wearing shorts and uh, this t-shirt. And yes, it's warm. It's uh, 29 centigrade, 83 Fahrenheit, and it's delicious. It's a, uh, warm weather, and we were talking about the Rolling Stones. Yes, Daniel is already impatient here because he's such a fan of the Rolling Stones. I am also, and they had a very famous, uh, popular show performance here in Copacabana Palace. The Rolling Stones just packed the beach. Many people here were on the sands waiting and looking forward for their show, which was a big hit and which brought one of the biggest audiences in the history of Copacabana. People came from all over Brazil and even people from other parts of Latin America, they came here to the, to the beach, to the show of Rolling Stones. And of course, people from all over the world also came and joined because Rio de Janeiro has people from all over the world. Hello, Sayuri. Sayuri Koshima. Sayuri Koshima is the Salvador, the Baiana goddess of this Hey Go platform because she is simply everywhere. She's like a goddess, omnipresent, and is my mentor. So she put me into the virtual tours, and I'm glad for her because she's very supportive and I have so much to learn with you, Sayuri. Yay, yay, my Instagram, yes. Thanks for reminding that. My Instagram is Rio and Cantos. Now, does any of you have heard about this man? We can have even a postcard of him in the silhouette and we can get closer to him as well. If you wanna see who was this man in front of Copacabana Beach, he's raising the flag of Brazil. Who is he? He is one of the most famous car racers in the world who won many prizes in the world uh, race cars and also showcased in England in the race car. What's the name of the race car uh, arena in, uh, that's most famous to the world competitions? It was Ayrton Senna, race car driver. Thank you, Joey, for helping me out with my English. I do need some support sometimes, many times, actually. So people here in Copacabana, there are many artisans who do their art, and their arts and crafts, and they showcase. So you, when you come here, if you had forgotten your bikini or jewelry, you have opportunities to... Uh, Purchase your own stuff here, your sarongs and so on, your fashion and clothes, your bikinis. Oh, Adrian, wow, really? Thanks for sharing that. That, that was like, well, Daniel said he was also uh, watching it. Wow, when you bring me this up, I'm getting goosebumps here. Thanks, wow. Yeah. It's. Oh, wow. Yeah. Daniel said that they were watching the race as well with uh, with my other friend, his brother, 
Andrea, and yeah, they they were shocked on the moment of the accident. Now uh, we are entering. Oh, before entering the beach, I would like to share with you a little bit of the design of the Copacabana sidewalks, uh, and I want to share that because that is an influence. Uh, on the landscape art and urban plans of the beach, which make like the landmark of Copacabana Beach. And okay, yes, Daniel, would you please show the the sidewalks here? These are called Hey Zeke. Thanks for joining. Hi Janice, Ziki, and Janice. Thanks for joining the tour of Copacabana Beach. Like I said, if you came here, you haven't brought your sarongs from where you come from, you have opportunities to buy from the street vendors beautiful sarongs showing different parts of Rio de Janeiro uh, with all the famous landscapes and places that we, uh, many of us guides here in Rio, like Dana and Tati Araújo showcase uh, in our virtual tours. And there is even one cool that reminds me the tours of Sayuri. But it's actually from Santa Teresa here in Rio, but also could be a landscape and a scenery in the in the part of Bahia, this lower part here with the uh, historic houses and people playing on the streets, dressed up in the carnival and also the Bayanas. Nice. So now talking about the patterns of the sidewalks of Copacabana. Thank you, Wesley, for joining the tour. Uh, Adrian it was in San Marino. He's a steering pail and hit a wall head. Uh, thanks for, for bringing the details, Adrian. Thank you, Sayuri, for the Ayrton Senna Institute sharing the Instagram so people can get to know more about Ayrton Senna. Hi, Francesca. Thanks for joining. You arrived just at the moment where we are showing the beautiful design and pattern of the Copacabana sidewalks. Uh, these, uh, the sidewalks, they are inspired by the Largo do Rocio in Lisbon. And it was done here by the time, uh, it was installed here and it was a different design. And by the time of the government of Mayor Pereira Passos at the beginning of the 20th century. Although in the remodeling of the sidewalks, and a modernization of the city, it was changed by the designer Burle Marx later on in, uh, in 1970. And Burle Marx was also a designer of many of the landscape uh, art that you see in the city with the coconuts, with the apui tree that I showed you with Aterro do Flamengo, for example. And when these uh, stones they were set here they were assembled one by one and then i was the help of my friend daniel to show you from very close how this is like a mosaic assembled together and many portuguese when they when the mayor brought this technique from portugal from lisbon they brought also the artisans the man who knew how to assemble this beautiful mosaic in order to teach all the other people who are working the construction workers to do this work here in Copacabana and the and now I want like seeing it from a broader perspective when you look at the sidewalk and the design I want you to let me know what does this resembles to what do you think Burle Marx was inspired by in order to create this design what does it uh, brings to your memory this its shape. Was it Copacabana, which was the inspiration for the Barry Manilon song? Ah, I don't know this song, Doris. Thank you so much for for bringing this. Uh, uh, how can I say this, uh, this information, because I will definitely check on Barry Manilow's Many song, because now I'm very curious about it. But Copacabana is a name, is a famous speech in Brazil. It's one of the most famous abroad. 
And uh, I bet because Copacabana, which is a beach of 4.15 kilometers, 2.5 miles, it has about 140,000 inhabitants, being one third of them elders. And it's where most of the hotels are located. So it's the most touristic neighborhood. Everybody who comes from other countries to Brazil and to Rio de Janeiro, they, most of them, 99% will stay in Copacabana. So 90% chance of yes, Copacabana being the song which inspired that. Copacabana had a bossa nova club. It was the Bottles Bar, where the bossa nova was created with many people such as Tom Jobim, João Gilberto, uh, Tim Maia also together, Elise Regina, Vinícius de Moraes. Uh, many other musicians were creating the bossa nova here in Copacabana and Ipanema. Famous songs also sang by musicians from other parts of the, the country who came to live here in Rio de Janeiro. Also, Baianos sang Copacabana. Né, Sayuri? The other time, I even shared uh, a song about Copacabana that I can play again on at the end of this tour. Wow, Doris, that's great. And how was the show when he came here? Hey, Nikki. Yes, now that Nikki answered the question, so the design of the sidewalks of Copacabana done by Roberto Burle Marx was inspired by the waves of the sea. So with that said, Nikki, we deserve getting in the sand and walking. Ah, I will sing the Copacabana song then. Copacabana, princesinha do mar. No, don't shoot the camera on me. <laughs> now I forgot the lyrics. <laughs> but I will play at the end of the, the, the tour and we will be able to sing along, okay? So let's share a little bit of the sands of Copacabana. And in the Copacabana beach, when every day here they come, uh, the people from uh, come clean the beach because it's a most it's an urban setting with just one for 140,000 residents plus all the people who come from different parts to practice numerous sports. So many people come and they do a very good service on cleaning the tree the the beach because people come and use thousands of people thousands and thousands use the beaches every day. So this is a Monday and there are many people arriving to practice the sports. Let me see what other comments or questions are popping out here. I'm very glad that you are very participative today. Thank you so much. And I want to share, please, if you can send me the name of this artist, Barry Manilo, uh, on my uh, Instagram at Rio Encantos, R I O E N C A N T O S, on Instagram. I will be very happy to research that again later so I won't forget. Uh, okay, a club in the USA named Copacabana. Well, I bet because. Many, uh, this is such a famous beach that inspired different artists and musicians. So what happens is that people will end up like bringing the name broad and, uh, and putting naming places and things after that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, he said here. Uh, Olha lá, tô falando, é que tá fazendo um tour virtual para algumas pessoas nos Estados Unidos e tal. Everybody, Copacabana is the best place to relax. So, uh, what's your name? My name is Marlon. Marlon. So, Marlon, Marlon, he's, are you from Rio, Marlon? Yeah. Nice. It's a nice place, Brazil, all year long. Nice, cool, Marlon, thanks. Yeah, you, you're right. right. 
He's a beach man. Look at that. He's he's very tanned, you know, and uh, work out a lot. So he's here in the beach at the beach quite often. Bye, Mahalo. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Well, hey, Saigu Review. Did you find your husband? Are you still looking after that? You see? <laughs> Saigur is always uh, looking after her husband around here. As far as the last tours I've watched from Saigur, I don't know if she's still looking after the, her husband. Ah, yes, that's very good to remember that. Uh, Daniel is bringing that up and it's a curiosity. It's very cool. Like you don't, when you come to the beach in Copacabana, you don't need to actually bring your umbrellas that will to protect you from the sun or your chairs because they do uh, rent them. So that's why Marlon, he works here at the beach and his tent is called Solegria. So he puts like this brand with the, the flag and there he sells caipirinhas and he rents the, the protections for the sun and the the chairs so then you pay uh, like you pay like two dollars and you have a nice set two three or five dollars depending on which beach you are and you can use for the whole day while you stay at the beach it's uh, really worth doing that and you don't get like pink such as the pink panther like many uh tourists when they come to rio when you see on the next day, they can't go to the beach anymore because they just relax so much that they sleep under the sun. And then when they wake up, they're all sunburned and they're pink like the pink panther. So don't do that. Just rent your, your <laughs> sun blocker and you'll be fine. Now we are getting close to the ocean waves. And look at this flag. When you see this red flag here, don't take the chance. Don't enter if you're not, uh, I don't recommend when it's said alto risco, it's high risk. Uh, it's from the, the fireman, the safe lifeguards. So they put this flag here. This means that all the swirling currents at the beach are really uh, taking you to a greater chance of being pulled deeper and longer. And there is even the helicopter flying around yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah usually uh, wh what, what happens with us, like we don't have high, high waves, but we do have streams and currents that pulls us. And it's all right if you enter the sea and you get stumbled by the water. I don't know how to say that in English, but we call it here cachote. So it's like a baptism. When we grow up in Rio de Janeiro, you have to take a few cachotes. It means that you enter the waves many times and many times you get caught and you swirl and you roll back, being brought by the, the, the waves all the way back here. What is... So it's usually a stronger like this because of the rains, because we've been having, I had to cancel one tour uh, this Saturday because it was raining quite a lot. So I apologize for those who wanted to do the UNESCO World Heritage Site with me. But fortunately, yesterday stopped raining and we are back to the virtual tours. Ah, I, please share this. Uh, Caipirinha lá, moço, estamos mostrando aqui para os gringos, para os turistas, a caipirinha que o senhor faz caipirinha. aqui na cidade. A melhor caipirinha do Rio de Janeiro. The best caipirinha of Rio de Janeiro. Qual o nome do senhor? JB. JB. JB, morango, maracujá. Strawberry, passion fruit. Isso, fruta, melancia. Watermelon. Melancia. Maracujá, lima. Ah, cool. So when you want to have... A good caipirinha here at the beach. You can talk to Mr. JB selling the beautiful, colorful caipirinhas in Copacabana. Yes. 